Let's vote on Aquarius. Welcome to your reading. I think it's Sunday. <clears throat> I never know what fucking day of the week it is. Yep, it's Sunday. Hope you're having a good Sunday fun day. This is, I really feel like, sun, moon, rising for Aquarius. Like, this is something pretty big. I don't know why. It's so big, I'm going to use my deck to figure it out. Because I'm a genie in a bottle. Okay. For reals. What is going on? Mmm. Ow. Oh, the sweat just starts. Now I have a genie in a bottle stuck in my fucking head. Oh. All right. Let's think, yeah. Clarity. I can't help but see all this red in the middle and then two black cards on the outside. The big and beautiful black cat and 911 emergency. Then we've got <clears throat> fighting and sex with deadline. Now I'm hearing Dateline, NBC. Why? I heard Dateline right away. I mean, Dateline is like, that's the news, right? Tonight here on Dateline. Is it like 60 minutes? Is that even the name of it? Whoa. Okay. Everything, everywhere dies. That's a six feet under quote. Wow. Okay. What this could be is two people that are driven together by sex and sex only. Their time is up. And this is magic because these two people, okay, um, are fucking crazy. They hate each other. But there's something to do with sex. And they stayed for the sex. Oof. That reminds me of, like, my mother. She was just sexually attracted to my stepfather, who was a pedophile. And I remember sometimes coming home after I'd been out and they had just had sex and my mother was like fucking proud of it. And I'd just be like, that's so disgusting. Like, if you have children, never ever should you parade your fucking sex life in front of them. Like, it does things to kids that you would not believe. And this brings me up to this one time. I was like 24, 25 or something like that. And, uh... My parents, like me and my parents, my dad and my stepmom, they still lived in the same city as me. But my stepbrother, 
he was like half an hour away from us and my sister was over an hour away from us so I was the only kid like around my parents my my dad and um, I went over to my dad's house my childhood house that I moved into when I was eight years old they still lived in him and my stepmother and I walked in it was like the middle of the afternoon I was a server so like I never worked during the day really and if I did it was like only until two o'clock two p.m you know and I walked into their house, and I was like, hello, you know, what's going on? And eventually they came out of, she came out of the bedroom and she was, she was dressed in lingerie. It was midday. Okay. And she was like, ah, you just walk into the house. Like we're busy, Whitney. And I was like, and later on, I just left. I couldn't even fucking believe that she had said, she yelled at me for opening up the door. She yelled at me for walking into her house in the middle of the day unannounced and I should have called. And I was like, okay, that's my dad. Why would I call my dad when I know he's home and he's right here? I'm not gonna fucking text him. Hey, FYI, I'm coming over. I'm your fucking kid. I shouldn't need to give you an FYI, I'm coming over. She took my key away. She took my childhood house key away from me and said that I was inappropriate and from now on they can let me in. 25 years old, walking into my parents' house. Who's inappropriate? My parents or me? I really don't think it's me. They were upstairs having sex, not like I'm going to walk up there and fucking knock on their door. Nah, I just would have roamed around the house, fucking grabbed a beer and waited until I fucking saw them. I would have just thought they were at my uncle's or something because my uncle lived across the street. And, and her sister, my stepfather's, my stepmother's sister lived across the other side of the street. So like, who knows where they are? I don't fucking know where they are. I wasn't going to go looking for them, but she was so disrespected. I'm like, it's the middle of the day. You have no fucking excuse to kick your child out of the house to have sex with her father. Fuck you, you're a grown-up. Wait till I'm done. Because clearly I went there for a reason. I needed something. Oh, her and their and then and actually this brings me to another time where my sister, we I was six, so she would have been eight. We had a tent trailer, and Cindy, my stepmother, um, she wasn't my stepmother at the time, she was my dad's girlfriend. She came along camping, and my sister said she woke up in the middle of the night. We were sleeping on her and I were sleeping on the um table that the dining room table that would go down into a bench right so me and her were on that her son was on the other side of the tent trailer in his wing and we were right beside cindy and my father my sister said she woke up in the middle of the night because she heard moaning and i guess the little curtain wasn't pulled all the way so she could see what was going on in that bunk and she saw them having sex she said she was nine years old eight or nine years old and she laid there like, like still, like as stiff as a board, she couldn't move. She was terrified about what was going on over there. Because sex, when you're introduced to it at a very young age, can either be something that you don't understand or something you're terrified of, right? And, and I remember the smugness on her face all the time. Like they kicked us out of the trailer at that point. They put us in a tent during a fucking during tornado season where my father used to run out naked all the time knowing that he was sleeping with his wife fucking naked beside his six-year-old and eight-year-old like my my father was so driven off of sex and he used his wife as a sex model he used her right and and she would just crop herself up and she got breast cancer like eight years into their relationship and we all told her, like, just cut them off. There is no point in dealing with this. If you get it once, you're going to get it again. And she said, if you didn't have breasts, you weren't a woman. She said it in front of my sister, who's an A cup. Do you know what that did to my sister? To feel like she wasn't a woman because she didn't have C cups like my stepmother? It was disgusting how she would put her body in front of us and make it seem like we had to adore the queen because she always thought she was the queen. Like her, her sexualness towards herself was so gross. And then you would hear her and my father fight and it was disgusting. He bowed down to every single fucking thing that woman would say. And it was gross because she was abusing my sister and I, she was, she was physically attacking my sister and I, and he, to spread her legs and fucked her all the time. And that's how I see my father. He will, I wrote her an email recently saying that I let, I was letting her go. I was releasing her from my life that I didn't, that the way that she tried to raise me as a woman is not the way a woman is supposed to be. 
that I don't need to flash my breasts around everywhere to get my husband to love me. And she wrote back to me. She did everything she did to me because she was poor. She was a poor little girl and she loved me and she doesn't understand why I don't want to speak to her. She was going to get me therapy and she was going to fix my life. And I'm like, you are bat shit crazy. Bat shit crazy. I wanted to release you. And all you can say is I can't release you because you were poor as a kid. So you stole everything from me. Are you fucking kidding? She's an Aquarius too. This is an Aquarius reading. So let me tell you, if there was an overly driven female around you that was overly sexified, which means like, even if they're a male, they're in their female form and they're trying to be sexy. They're using sex as a symbol, right? They're, they're, they keep fit, right? They stay skinny. They can't possibly be fat. My, my father could never gain five pounds without Cindy making him going on a, uh, making him going on a diet, right? She had to keep my father attractive. She had to keep him looking good. She got rid of all of his t-shirts that were 10, 15 years old. She would buy him all new clothes. She was dressing up a Barbie, a Ken doll, right? She wanted him to look, dress, talk, everything the exact way she wanted. And she got him how she wanted it, but it took about 10, 15 years to get him exactly pripped and prodded and, and exactly what she wanted in a male. And I feel like the thing is, is that sex, and I tried to tell her this, sex was never going to keep her around. That she had to realize, she was born in 1958, that shit is not going to stay up forever. And you are going to lose your tits and you are going to lose your ass and your fucking pussy is going to drop to the floor and my dad's not going to be able to fuck you anymore. Then where your where is your relationship going to go? Because she, I mean, they can't hang out. Like they try to, but they took this like trip like it, to Italy and Cindy shopped all day and my dad got drunk. Like they, they don't, they have nothing in common, but they force themselves to have things in common because they're physically attracted to one another. They, they've never gotten over lust. Okay. And lust is a deadly sin. You want to live off lust your whole life, then you are going to be living a very hard, sinful life to keep yourself in that mode, right? That somebody has to look a certain way, talk a certain way, be a certain way, like, but they can't hang out as friends. They can't, they're not friends. And that's why I've always said, if I'm not friends with a guy, I'm never going to fucking date them, let alone fuck them, let alone ever cross a line with them. If I can't chill with you, if I can't smoke with you, if I can't have a conversation with you, I can't have nothing with you. It doesn't matter. But I used to use my body like all I cared about was what a dude looked like, right? So it's like that frame of mind always had to leave because why do I care what somebody looks like? It's not how they're going to look forever, right? They're never going to hold on to their sexy looks forever. So like, what the fuck? Again, it comes down to conversation. It comes down to who you can sit in a room with and have a decent experience with every day because that's the person you end up dying with. Or you could die with, or you leave in 20 years because you find somebody else, right? It's like, you have to be able to let people go as much as, keep them around and and because of her because of my stepmother's pull over my father they they can't have a disagreement like he has to agree with everything she says right they can't have opposite opinions on anything because she says that's not how a relationship goes you have to think the same way you have to feel the same way everything has to be the same that's a relationship that's not a relationship everybody's different nobody should just be compromising with you because you're a little bitch and can't take the truth Right? Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat things for people. I'm not going to be like, oh, by the way, I know it's going to hurt. Nah, you need to hear the truth. You need to hear it. It's going to hurt. And, and like, there, there's no way of downspinning that. Right? A, a needle is going to hurt no matter what. I'm going to put it in hard, soft, what the fuck, whatever. It doesn't matter. Truth is truth. Right? And this, oh, oh my gosh, I just saw whore. Every whore dies. Where I wrote everywhere like everything everywhere dies, where I saw everywhere, I saw every whore, which is dyslexia, right? Dyslexia, it allows you to see what your channeled eye is seeing. That's what dyslexia is. It's, it's hard when you don't know what it is and you think that your mind is playing tricks on you. It's not, it's your third eye. And for the most part, I can actually see better with my eyes open through my third eye than I can with my eyes closed through my third eye. Right, because it's like it's like having a video game playing in your mind. You, you, I can always see it, even though I'm looking at my wall or the camera. I can always see what's going on in my third eye because my third eye is always open. Right? I don't know where that, why I just said that, but um, yeah. 
somebody saw this. I, and I, I, I think somebody saw this coming. I think somebody knew that they're, they weren't going to be able to do this forever. But doesn't mean that they didn't fight to keep it alive every day. It was active. So this, every whore dies. Oh yeah, but dyslexia. Every whore dies, because I just saw it again. So this woman, this feminine energy that's using sex to get what she wants is done. Good. Money. Oh, as I said, money. Look, a money hungry bitch. That's all it is. They just want money. And that's really sad to see what somebody would do for money. That really sucks. Oh, of course, because they're a loser. They're a loser in their own mind, and they think everybody else thinks they're a loser. So they found somebody that even though they fight cat and dogs with, they kept the sex alive to keep them out of an emergency. Clearly, I feel like this person was going to lose it on their own, right? They needed to drag somebody else down with them as opposed to get their own head straight. Like anybody that uses a man or uses a woman like that, even in their adult years, you have to wonder, what did you get used? Right. Because if you're using another person, right, then that means most likely you were used. So if you were used, why? Right. How? What happened? So then you stop using other people, because I think it's all about it's it's I think subconsciously about the ego. Right. If you lose your power in a situation, then you kind of grow up with wanting power between your legs, wanting to take power away from other people, knowing that that was taken away from you, right? Oh, okay. We got um, mimosa juice in reverse. With clock and ghost. Watchful eye, the past, visitation. This person is going to get a visitation from the past. And so shall it be. I also think that maybe they get end up getting ghosted. Right? This person that they've been using for sex ghosts them. And so shall you. What the fuck? You want to use me? That's your root chakra. That's your first chakra. When damage gets done to that root chakra, it affects every chakra, right? And, and, and actually, this is a um, little bit of a fact for you. Um, when I was three, that's when I was, that's when I was first molested um, by my stepfather. And when I was just after that, um, three and a half, maybe four, I, um, repeatedly jumped off of a playground, uh, landing on my head while my stepfather and my mother were on a walk on the beach. I stayed at the playground and my stepbrother ran to my mother and said, your daughter just jumped onto her head. And so my mother ran to me and took me to the hospital and they had a CAT scan done and everything. And, and my stepbrother said, I jumped off this playground and hit my head three times. I just kept going up and jumping off, going up and jumping off and landing on my head. And finally he had, I knocked myself out and he had to say something. And um, 20 years later, this is how this shit affects your chakras, right? When, you're, when your root chakra is abused because it goes straight up your spine, right? It'll start going like this. Right, because everything now is going to be thrown off from that one thing and that beginning root chakra. Right, so my spine, as the years went, because they only looked at my head, they didn't look at my body. My spine went like this. It it literally does this to my head, because that's how much it's thrown off my chakras. And I actually had to see this African uh, witch uh, during this plant. Um, exhibition I went to to learn how herbs um, can really heal the body 
And this, Mex this uh, not Mexican, this African witch, she came up to me and uh, she goes, what's with this? Like, you are curved. And I went to the chiropractors a couple weeks later and that's when I found out about my spine. So for 20 to 25 years, about, yeah, about 25 years at the time, my spine was slowly just deteriorating because every chakra was out of line. So because everything was out of line, it physically deformed my spine. My spine didn't have to do anything after I jumped on my head. But that one crack cracked it all because my little body as a four-year-old knew I was never going to heal. And then for, my, for the rest of my um, littlehood, uh, until I was about 20, I picked all my scabs. And I would have these nightmares about scabs and jars. And I'd be like, there's scabs and jars. Why, why am I seeing scabs and jars? And it's because I used to pick my scabs because I never let wounds heal. Because my body wasn't healed. And my parents just walked around me like everything was fine. And the second I stepped out of place, I got beat. Right? Grounded. Fucking starved. Like my parents didn't give a fuck ass about me. All they wanted to do was drink and fuck each other. And that's it. They were under these nasty lust spells that, that children have no part of because we don't want to have sex. We don't want anything to do with it. We just want to live. We just want to grow, right? We don't want to be in this disgusting realm of naked dicks and pussies everywhere, right? We just want to be at home chilling or with our friends chilling or down at the creek or fucking in the woods. Like we don't want to have anything to do with your sex life, right? So the clock is up on these people that did things, that used sex as a weapon instead of helping themselves, instead of seeing where the emergency really was and that the emergency was in them, not in everybody else around them. Their time is up. Their deadline is up. Every whore dies. I think I'm actually going to even name the reading that because I think it's very beneficial to, to somebody's healing is to know that the whore that kept fucking dudes all the time instead of taking care of their kid is going to pass away, right? They're going to get ghosted in some way and anything they were doing using sex is now done. Actually, that kind of brings me back to like, that's Vinnie Paz too. Oh my God, so many rappers talk about their moms and how their moms left them and became whores and slept around with all these dudes because their dads weren't around. And I'm just like, oh, like, that's so gross. Like, these poor little boys hiding in closets while their moms were fucking, like, oh, that's so gross. Ugh. Anyways, what else was supposed to happen, though? Like, what, are you supposed to get picked up by fucking you know, by child services and just taken to a whole new life. Like, that's not the way that shit worked. Like, I know a lot of kids that I grew up with would have rather been in that house getting what their parents were going to give them that night instead of being in some fucking orphanage all by themselves, right? Pain, the way that we saw was pain was love, right? You, you hated me. I guess that means you love me, right? No. Anyways, big, big reading, big reading. And I know it's going to help somebody, so peace.